for today's discussion, um, I'll be talking about the power of video games and who's in control of your social, uh, mental, and also emotional health. So that is what I was uh, meaning uh, when I was mentioning about who's in control. So with, um, with more people staying at home during the global pandemic, uh, video game demand and sales have pretty much gone through the roof. Um, let's take a look at Nintendo, for example. So um, someone mentioned Animal Crossing before, uh, but essentially the Nintendo Switch has been sold out in stores and online for uh, over a month. Um, and we're still seeing kind of third party sellers uh, mark up the units uh, anywhere from 100 to $200 or even more. Um, this is a bit of a drop from what it was initially. Um, I'm pretty sure there were like doubling in prices uh, before, um, but I'm not really here to talk about the numbers. You can find all the sales stats and everything else online. Um, what I am going to talk about is the power that video game games uh, possess when it comes to influencing your social, mental, and emotional health. So uh, for those who aren't really too familiar with the wonderful world that is uh, MMOs, MOBAs, and Battle Royales, um, please go look that stuff up if this talk actually interests you. Um, there's no way that I can actually cover everything, um, the history behind the video games in 15 minutes. Um, but I will touch on a game like League of Legends, which is classified as a MOBA, um, which is a multiplayer online battle arena style game. Um, and in my opinion, um, MOBAs are kind of like the online equivalent to our traditional sports, um, our traditional team sports, that is. Uh, stuff like hockey and basketball. Um, for League of Legends, the game is played with five players on each team. Uh, and they work together um, to try to beat the other five, like any other team sport does. So um, this game has professional leagues around the world. Um, in North America, it's called the LCS, short for the League of Legends Championship Series. Um, and when I say that it's, uh, they do have professional leagues, uh, yes, they do make money. Um, a pro LCS player makes anywhere from, um, I think like the, the entry level is 75,000 US dollars um, upwards to, they don't release what the upper limit is, but it's um, on average, it's a $300,000 uh, guaranteed salary before any bonuses or prize pools for the, the professionals in this league. So um, that's pretty much on par with the major league um, soccer, the major league soccer um, league. That's the North American soccer league um, that, was established, I think, in the early 2000s or uh, 2010s. Um, so what does like, kind of all this stuff have to do with my health? Um, well, during this time where traditional sports and other live events and gatherings are pretty much non-existent, um, it eliminates a lot of social gatherings that people uh, congregate for. Um, and just take a look back at the last year. If you were to look at, not today, but tomorrow, um, one year ago, which is May 12th, that is on that day, that's when Kawhi Leonard made that shot against the Philadelphia 76ers, um, putting us past them and going into um, the Eastern Finals with Milwaukee. So um, the question is kind of like, what were you doing at that time? Uh, where were you when it happened? And how'd you feel? Because uh, we definitely don't have that same atmosphere right now. Um, but in the world of esports and video games, um, life marches forward. Um, they're still able to have like hundreds of millions of people gather um, around for live events where people can still interact and um, have kind of this online commingling uh, in real time. So streaming sites like Twitch, who broadcast these matches, allow viewers to tune in and to take part in these live chats. Um, people can sit at their computers or cast their streams onto their TVs and watch as the pros kind of duke it out for the championship title. Um, and a little while ago, actually just about a month ago, um, the team Cloud9 uh, claimed the championship in the LCS. So that's that was something that was uh, pretty big in the uh, league community. So um, again, like these, for, for people like, um, that don't really have that type of outlet, um, let's say for the NBA fan, uh, for us at the in Toronto, like with being a Raptors fan, um, we're still lucky enough to be able to watch these reruns that come on, um, showing the championship run from last season, um, and still being able to call ourselves the reigning champs. Um, but 
for most people, it's it's not really the same. It doesn't replicate or replace um, what live sporting events or what live events uh, do for people. Um, so the social impact doesn't really stop at just the viewings um, of these pro events, um, but kind of playing these games and doing something collaborative with your friends and uh, the community at large are a huge part of keeping your social, mental, and emotional health in check. Um, so when I ask the question of who's in control, um, I'm I'm simply asking like if you're sitting at home and kind of letting this uh, self isolation and self uh, social distancing um, get you down, have you tried um, seeking out a safe haven in maybe video games, um, or has that even been a thought? Some games have a pretty steep learning curve, um, but think of it as kind of learning a new skill, uh, like any other skill, like cooking, uh, knitting, or anything else. Uh, learning how to CS is kind of like learning how to dribble basketball. Uh, learning how to, or when to tower dive is like knowing what to do during a fast break. Um, and learning how to win the game requires the same communication and the same teamwork um, skills that are necessary and needed in pretty much any other game uh, whether it's online or in person. So um, that pretty much wraps up my talk about the power of video games and who's in control. Um, today's talk kind of lived up to the name of Beyond Coaching. This has pretty much nothing to do with uh, what I usually do, but it does um, have to do with the uh, the health. So the mental, social, um, and emotional health of, of you guys and of the community members at large. So for people who um, aren't really able to, or they're not getting that same level of motivation to work out indoors, um, and they're lacking that little bit of social um, stimulation as well as the, the emotional stuff, um, maybe seeking out something like video games. Um, most of them that you can kind of find online, they are free and you can interact with people online. And I think that's the biggest part of it. It's not just playing the game itself, but it's the actual interaction between you and other people, um, whether it's through voice comms, so you can chat with them, or if you just type it out. So um, that is all. Hope you learned something new from this today, um, and we'll chat again. Thank you for listening.